Okay, let's try another example that uses one of our special cases, which means we need to apply the epsilon method. Use the Routh Hurwitz criterion to determine if a system with the following characteristic equation is stable. Delta of s is equal s to the fifth plus 2s to the fourth plus 2s cubed plus 4s squared plus 11s plus 10. So the first row is going to have our odd coefficient, so we're going to have 1 to 11. The second row is going to have our even coefficients, so we're going to have 2, 4, and 10. And then the first thing we're going to find is B1. B1 is equal to negative 1, 2, 2, 4, divided by 2, which equals 0. So we're going to put 0 here, but instead of keeping the 0 in our first column, we're actually going to give it a small positive value we're going to call epsilon, where epsilon is a small number greater than 0. Okay, now we're going to keep going with our analysis. So next we're going to find B2. B2 is equal to negative 111, 210, divided by 2. So that's going to be 6. B3 is going to be negative 1020, divided by 2 and that's going to equal zero. Now let's do C1. C1 is going to equal negative two, four, epsilon, six, and that's divided by epsilon, and that's going to equal negative 12 over epsilon plus four, and that's what we're going to put here negative 12 over epsilon plus 4. C2 is equal to negative 2, 10, epsilon 0, divided by epsilon, so that equals 10. And C3 is equal to negative 2, 0, epsilon 0, divided by epsilon, and that equals zero. D1 is equal to negative epsilon six, four minus 12 over epsilon 10, divided by four minus 12 over epsilon, so D1 is equal to 6 minus 10 over 4 over epsilon minus 12. 6 minus 10 over 4 over epsilon minus 12. D2 is equal to negative epsilon 0 4 minus 12 over epsilon 0 divided by 4 minus 12 over epsilon, D2 is equal to 0. And finally, let's find E1. E1 is equal to negative 4 minus 12 over epsilon 10, 6 minus 10 over 4 over epsilon minus 12, 0, divided by 6 minus 10 over 4 over epsilon minus 12, and all of that equals 10. So now let's analyze the table to determine sign changes. 1 to 2 is no sign change, and 2, since epsilon is a small positive number, is no sign change. However, 4 minus 12 over epsilon if epsilon is a very small positive number, 4 minus 12 is going to be negative. So from here to here, we have our first sign change. So now let's look at 6 minus 10 over 4 over epsilon minus 12. Once again, 4 over epsilon minus 12, if epsilon is a small positive number, that's going to be negative. 
and then a negative divided by a negative is a positive. So there's also going to be a sign change from here to here. And then if this is positive and this is positive, there's no sign change. So we're going to have two sign changes. So two sign changes means we have two poles in the right half plane. So this is an unstable system. Since the system was order five, this tells us that we have three poles in the open left half plane. Okay, let's try another example. Use the Ralph Hurwitz criterion to determine if a system with the following characteristic equation is stable. Delta of S is equal to S to the fourth plus S cubed plus S squared plus S plus one. So first, the first row is going to be one, 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 because all the coefficients are one. The second row is going to be one, one. So B1 is negative one, 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 divided by one. So B1 is equal to zero. And as we did before, we use a small positive number when we get a zero in the first column. So here I'm going to put epsilon greater than zero. And now we find B2. B2 is equal to negative one, 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 zero. We put a zero here, divided by one. And that equals one. So here we're going to have a one. So now we find C1. C1 is equal to negative one, one, epsilon one divided by epsilon, which is negative one minus epsilon over epsilon, or one minus one over epsilon, that goes here. C2 is equal to negative one zero epsilon zero, so we have a zero here, divided by epsilon, so that equals zero. So we put a zero here. And then we do D1. D1 is equal to negative epsilon one, one minus one over epsilon zero, divided by one minus one over epsilon, which equals one. So we put a one here and then we pad that row with a zero. So now let's evaluate. We have one, one. If epsilon is greater than zero, that's one. So, so far we have no sign change. If epsilon is a small positive number, we do have a sign change here because it's going to become negative. And because this is negative and the last row is positive, we're also gonna have a sign change there. So we have two sign changes, which means we have two poles in the right half plane and two poles in the open left half plane. So once again, we have an unstable system. Okay, let's try another example. What if delta of S is S cubed plus S squared plus two S plus two? So we're going to have in the first row, one, two, And in the second row, one, two. So B1 is equal to negative one, two, one, two, divided by one, which equals zero. And B2 is equal to negative one, zero, one, zero, divided by one, which equals zero. And this is one of our special cases. Remember we have a special case when we have a row of zeros. And what this tells us is that the row before this is a factor of the characteristic equation. So the row before this gives us a polynomial P of S equal to S squared plus two, and this is a factor of delta of S. So we're going to replace the third row with 
the derivative of p of s, which is equal to 2s. So this gives us a1, which is equal to 2. So I'm going to put a 2 here, and this is going to be a 0. So now, this is my new B1. So B1 is equal to negative 1, 2, 2, 0, divided by 2, which equals 2. So there are no sign changes in the first column. And this tells me that my system is marginally stable because I will have one pole in the left half plane. And as seen here by this polynomial, I am going to have two poles on the J omega axis.